Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, how about a fully functional, operational, and the gauges work AC system right here so you can see everything in wide open. Now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have to go through the AC cycle. It's always the basics, but it gives you a better understanding when you were diagnosing and Brian and I looked at those gauge readings. This will help out. It all starts right here at the compressor. Now, the compressor is gonna put out a high pressure gas, and this is the hottest part of the system. So if I was feeling this, it would feel really, really warm. And what's going to go on is it's going to send that over to what's called a condenser. That's located in the front of the car. Now, in the condenser, it changes states. The refrigerant changes from a high-pressure gas to a high-pressure liquid. And then what it's going to do, it's either going to send it through a little bit later, we'll look at an orifice tube, which would be an accumulator, but this one's a receiver dryer because it's before the thermostatic expansion valve. So it goes through the receiver dryer, and then it comes over to this H block, which has a thermostatic expansion valve built into it. But what does that do? It changes the pressures. So now we're going from a high pressure to a low pressure. And really cool, you can have an orifice tube as well. You may have an orifice tube system. This orifice tube will do the same thing. The difference is the thermostatic expansion valve regulates, and I'll show you, it's really precise. After that, we're gonna take the refrigerant, we're gonna take it as a low pressure, which is very, very cold, and we're gonna take it as a liquid and bring it into the evaporator. The evaporator is located inside the car. Now that evaporator is gonna blow that hot air from inside the car across it, it's gonna boil off. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna turn into a gas, so it goes from a low pressure liquid to a low pressure gas and then returns back to the compressor. Now, the component we're dealing with over on our Impala, that's this H-block or thermostatic expansion valve. And I have one cut away for you right here so you can actually see it. What happens, and on the top here, you have a sensing ball. The sensing ball actually lets this thing open and close. So for example, if it's really cold in there and the evaporator's starting to get cold, this is supposed to close and stop the refrigerant flow, and then it's gonna heat up a little bit. Now, if it's hot in there, the sensing ball will allow this to open up. It'll let the refrigerant flow through there and it'll get the car cooler. Now, what we did, we actually sprayed it with this spray right here. And that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna spray this. And what you wanna do is you really wanna watch closely with these gauges. Now these gauges are critical. You can see on the gauges right now, this is perfect. My low side sitting there about 30, 32. My high side sitting there about 100. That's perfect, okay? It's a little cool in here, so that's good reading. Now when I spray it, watch that low side should drop a hair, why? because the thermostatic expansion valve closes. When it closes, watch the flow will also stop. This is really cool. Where are you gonna see glass tubes on an AC system except for at Tech Garage? I spray it, refrigerant flows, gauge moves, it's working. We sprayed our Impala, nothing. Check this out. There goes the gauge dropping and voila. Refrigerant flow stops, exactly what we want to see in a proper operating system. What happened? Thermostatic expansion valve slammed closed. It's gonna warm up in a second here. Everything's gonna go back to working normally. Meanwhile, the temperature's regulated inside the car. Perfectly operating system. The Impala, on the other hand, sprayed it, no change. Brian hit this diagnosis right on the head. It's a thermostatic expansion valve. Let's check in with him and see how he's coming along with it. Well, we are in great shape over here, John. We've got the old thermostatic expansion valve H-block all removed. Here's the temperature sensor. Remember this from John's demo? You can see how it fits, how it works on this thing. To the naked eye, nothing really looks wrong with it. But that's why the proper diagnostic process is really important, so we know we're replacing exactly what needs replaced. Now, here's the new one from Rock Auto. You can see it looks exactly the same, same size ports, same temperature sensor, and they even give us a new stud here so we can get a really good tight fit with those refrigerant lines. So before I get this installed, we gotta get the O-rings reseated. Now down here on the firewall on the lines, I've got the first two O-rings in line. Those are the new ones that came with the kit. Make sure you got plenty of PAG oil for lubricant to get around them and get them seated down where they wanna be. Now on the refrigerant lines themselves, you've got to remove the old O-rings. Let's do the large one first. Comes right off. Again, in the kit from Rock Auto, there's a new one. You can see there's green PAG oil everywhere here, so I've got plenty of lubrication to get these on. If it was dry, you'd want to add some PAG oil to make sure you get a good fit without damaging that O-ring at all. Let's go ahead and do the small one. Same thing. Here's the new one. Goes on, we've got lots of oil and lubrication there to get a good seat down on there. Now, I've got two anchor bolts, just like the old one, to go back in and get it reinstalled. We'll come down here, take your time and work it in. You'll feel it seat down 
on those O-rings. It can only go one way, right there. You can feel its seat very clear. I'm gonna go ahead and get one of the studs in, and we'll go ahead and torque that down to spec. Torque specs are everything here. We're gonna get the studs right, get the refrigerant lines back on, get everything buttoned up to proper torque, and then the final step. We gotta vacuum the system of any moisture. Okay, so we're down here in Florida. That's about a 45 minute job. If you're in some other state, it might be closer to 30 minutes. Our Arctic Pro is gonna do that for us back to the low side port. But you could do that vacuuming with a vacuum pump. And you could draw that out. Again, 30 to 45 minutes, check the spec and see what it wants to be. We'll get that done. We'll top it off with the refrigerant and John will have nothing to complain about anymore. So tell you what, stay with us on Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Project M&M is gonna be exciting today. We're gonna keep cool.